We already know how to graph a linear function that's just a line. We need to work with graphing a quadratic. Quadratic functions, well, let's back up, I guess. A linear function was in the form of y equals some number x plus something. Okay, notice here that a linear x is to the power of 1. So with a quadratic, x is to the power of 2. The exponent here makes this a quadratic. Anything that is to the x squared is going to be a quadratic function. Now, there are some conditions. The number in front of the x squared obviously cannot be 0 because 0 times anything gives you nothing. So then you wouldn't have um, the x squared. When we're talking about a quadratic, we're going to be in generic form of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, that's going to be our generic form that you need to know. So some of you might be thinking, okay, what does the graph of a quadratic look like? The graph of a quadratic is just a u. Okay, so that in the blue there would be a quadratic function. Now, we know that a quadratic function, it has to pass the vertical line test, in which case this does. All right, so we've got some more vocab here that I want to talk about. So if this is my graph, the lowest point or the highest point, depending on if your U is upside down or not, this point here, this is called your vertex. Your vertex also holds the axis of symmetry. Now, some of you might be thinking, okay, what is the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry is where you can cut that U in half, and it's going to, if you fold that, it would match up. So, for instance, looking at this, our axis of symmetry is on the green dotted line. Now, there are formulas in order to figure out where your vertex is and where your axis of symmetry is at. Your vertex and this is just the x coordinate. That equals negative b over 2a. And this is all stemming from the f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Your axis of symmetry is then at the line x equals negative b over 2a. So to kind of get an idea here of what we will be doing, you will be asked to graph these functions. And when you're graphing these functions, you need to figure out where your vertex is in order to figure out your other points. We want to know where that U shape is going to be. If I don't know where that U shape is, how do I know that this graph really isn't like this? I don't know unless I know where that vertex shape is which we have that formula for. So let's say, for instance, 
that I am asked to graph the function g of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 1. So my a is what corresponds to x squared, which is 1. b is negative 3, and c is 1. So I can use those in order to find my vertex. Your vertex is at negative b over 2a. So I have negative, negative 3 over 2 times 1. So my vertex is really at 3 over 2. Okay, so what is that? I can't plot 3 over 2. That's just my x-coordinate. So in order to figure out the other points, you need to make a t-chart or an h-chart. And we had talked about this before, where we plug in our domain, our work, and then we'll find our range. For sure, I am going to have three halves because I need to know where that vertex is at. Then from there, I'm just going to pick some point, um, domain values. You're just giving it a rough estimate. Um, so looking at this, I'm going to go with one I'm going to go with negative 1. Generally, I try to mirror it up. So if I have 1, then I go negative 1. If I were to have 2, I'd have negative 2. And then I always try to get the 0 because I'm always kind of curious about where the 0 lies. So now I'm just going to plug that right into my formula. So I've got 3 halves squared minus 3 times 3 halves plus 1. So when I plug that in, I get negative 1. 1.25. Not a great vertex, but we'll go with it. Um, I'm going to plug in the 1 now. So 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 1. I'll get nicer numbers, obviously, without the decimals. I know that 1 squared is 1. Minus 3 gives me negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 gives me negative 1. Plug negative 1 in. And be careful if you're entering the negative 1 squared into your calculator. Um, you need to have parentheses around it. Otherwise, what's going to happen is it's going to make it a negative 1. And we know that negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. So that's what I'm telling you. Be cautious. Uh, when I plug negative 1 in, I get a positive 5. And then when I plug 0 in, I get a positive 1. So I have some numbers here to go off of in order to plot my graph. So I'm going to plot uh, 3 over 2, which is really 1.5, and then it goes down to negative 1 and a quarter. I'm just giving it a rough estimate. So I know right now that my graph is going to go somewhere like this because I know this is my vertex, okay? So I'm not really going to put those dots there. Okay, so this is my first point. That's my vertex. Um, you might want to put, make sure that you have a little note somewhere that you know that's your vertex. Now I'm going to plot one negative one. Negative 1 gives me 5. 0 gives me 1. Now notice here, I haven't gone to the right side at all. So if you notice that, maybe you should grab a point, an x value, to the right of your vertex. That way you know for sure where the other side is going to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick um, 3 and plug 3. Actually, let's go smaller. Let's plug 2 in and see what we get there. Again, this is kind of trial and error what you want to plug in. But it is good for you to see what happens. And when I plug 2 in, I see I get negative 1. So now I have a point there. Notice that the axis of symmetry, remember, 
it's like my mirror line. So this negative one and, or negative one, this one and two, they're halfway, they, the vertex is halfway between them. So if I were to cut that in half, this point here would match up with this point here, okay? So I can kind of have an, a mirror image here and not even have to do the work to say that if I plug three in, then it's gonna be one because it's going to mirror this other point over here. And there's my graph. So my question for you is to determine the vertex. You don't have to graph anything. Now, when you're determining the vertex, I want this in x comma y form. So you need to actually plug it in and figure it out. So your function is going to be 2x squared minus 1. Something to note in this, I don't have an x term, so I'm going to list that in there. Why did I list that in there? I needed that to know what my b was. A lot of people forget this. So we know my vertex is at negative b over 2a, which in our case is 0 over 2 times 2, which is 0. So I'm going to plug that in to my function in order to determine the y value of my coordinate. And I know that that gives me negative 1. So my final answer is at 0, negative 1.